Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. The time has finally come that we're going to do a review video for the UXG Lite. This was released about a week ago from Ubiquity, and it's supposed to be the successor to the USG3, which was released about eight or nine years ago. What we're going to do in this video, I'm going to show you what comes in the box. I'm going to show you the specs of the UXG Lite, and then I'll show you the setup that I currently have with a USG. We're also going to do some speed tests with the USG to show you the differences between the UXG Lite with the IDS on and off. The UXG Lite can do one gigabit routing with the IDS and IPS turned on. If you're new to my channel, there is a ton of Ubiquity content that is going to be coming out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. And I do have affiliate links down in the description below. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the UXG Lite. And this is the UXG Lite. It is a very small compact device that doesn't come with any mounting options at this time. So you would have to have your own shelf or put this on a desk. We can see the Ubiquity branding, which is in silver, right on top. Now there's only a couple interfaces within the UXG Lite. We have our WAN port, we have our LAN port, and then our USB-C that will power this up. And we also have a reset button. Both of the ethernet ports are one gigabit per second. They don't do multi gigabit. Now as a size comparison, this is one of the old USG3 and this is the new UXG Lite. You would tell it's a lot smaller than its predecessor. And if we put it on top, you could also see the difference. The UXG Lite is made out of more of a plastic, whereas the USG was made out of metal. The only other thing that comes with the UXG Lite is a six foot USB-C power cable. Now let's go back to the computer and look at the specs. Now the biggest complaints that I'm seeing online about the UXG Lite is about the number of ports. The USG used to have three ports, so you could either use the third port as a WAN or a LAN. Ubiquity does offer different devices if you need that. Also, if you need multi-gigabit, you'd want to go to the UDM Pro, UDM SE, or the UXG Pro. This is more of an entry level device. If you're looking at getting this device and you need a secondary WAN, you could always get the ULTE or something like a cradle point. The Gateway Lite is currently only available in the United States. In the Canadian store as well as the Europe store, it shows coming soon. It is sold out in the United States, but it comes in at $129 USD. The USG3 is $139. So the Gateway Lite, we could do up to 10 times routing performance over the USG, and this was tested with IDS, IPS, QoS, and Smart Qs. We will do our own testing for the IDS and IPS, and we could also manage this a few different ways. So we could either get a cloud key, the Unified Cloud Console, or you could self-host it. If you want to self-host it, you just need to download the Unify Network Controller and put it on your own computer or on your own server. For the CPU, they're using a dual core ARM Cortex-A53 at 1 gigahertz, and for the memory, we're using a 1 gigabit DDR3L. Now, this is the current setup that I have. I have the USG3 plugged into my internet, and it's all being controlled by the Unify Cloud Console. The switch I'm going to be using is the Flex 10G, and connecting to that is a Zima board, which is running open speed tests for us to do a bit of testing. We will also use speed tests to show our internet throughput. My computer will be plugged into one of the ports on the switch. And what we're going to do to get the UXG in, we're just going to drop it into our cloud controller and then remove the USG3. All the settings within the controller will still be working perfectly fine. Now we're into my Unify cloud controller and you can see at the top we have the USG3 plugged in and then we have the USW Flex XG. If we look down at the settings, I don't have any Wi-Fi configured and we're not going to do that in this video, but under my networks, I have a few different VLANs. We have VLAN 1, 2, and 3. Currently, there is no IDS or IPS turned on, and I want to show you what the speed test would look like. The connection going into the USG3 is a 3 gig by 3 gig, but obviously the max we could get is 1 gig by 1 gig because that's all that the interface will allow us on the USG. So let's press go. And we're pretty much getting line right out to the internet, 946 down and 903 up. But now if we turn IDS and IPS on, this is going to limit what we get. So we're going to go over to our security and then we're going to put on notify and block. That is our IPS. And then we're going to put it on high under the detection sensitivity. If we look under customize, there is only 11 different filters. It is the exact same as on the UXG Lite, And I'll show you that once we get it adopted. So if we apply these changes 
and then do a speed test, we're gonna see different results. And these are the results with IDS and IPS on, and it's only about one tenth of the speed. But what about inner VLAN routing? With the IPS and IDS on, does it affect that? And that's what we're gonna use open speed test for on the Zima board. So I'm gonna end up turning the detections off and we'll see what we get. Now, currently this computer is sitting on the default network. To test our inner VLAN routing, we need to make sure that it's on a different network. So we'll go to my switch, we'll go to port manager, the Castle OS, that is my Zima board, and we're gonna leave that on the default. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this computer onto YouTube VLAN 2, and then we're gonna apply the changes. Now doing an IP config, we could see that this computer is on 172.16.1.6, and the open speed test is on 192.168.1.8. So I'm gonna start a test and we should pretty much get line rate. All right, and just like I thought, we're pretty much getting line rate at 872 down and 944 up. But will this affect if we turn IDS and IPS on? I'm gonna do that right now. Under our security, we need to make sure that our networks we want covered with IDS and IPS are in the network section. This is new with the new Unify OS 8.0.7, and you can see that everything is a part of it, and I have Notify and Block on, and we have it on high. Now running another open speed test, we should see a difference with the inner VLAN routing. Again, on the USG, we're only getting about one tenth the speed, so 131 down and 125 up. So now what we need to do, we need to get the UXG light into our cloud controller. And what I'm gonna do, I'll bring the camera over, I'll show you me swapping it out, and then we'll have to adopt it by my phone. So this is the little test setup that I have for this video. We got my USG, we have the switch, and then we have the Zima board. Here is the UXG light, and you might not be able to see that little light, but it is in a factory default state as it's white. It will turn blue once it's adopted to a controller. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to unplug the USG3. The blue cable connecting to it, that's my WAN port, so let's unhook that. And then we're going to plug it into the WAN port of the UXG light. The LAN port is the beige cable, so we'll unplug that and then plug it into the LAN port of the UXG light. If you're using a cloud key or if you're using a self-hosted controller within your computer, you should see this available to adopt. But seeing as I'm using the cloud hosted solution, it's gonna be a little bit different and I'll show you that from my phone. Now we're over on my phone and you can see that a new device has been found. That's the next generation gateway light. It's doing this through Bluetooth. We're gonna press set up. It's now connecting to the console. And then it's saying select a console. What I found here is it won't show up right away. So I'll click connect to a console manually and then I'll just exit out of it and our consoles should show up. And the top one here is the one that we're gonna be used. Everything below it is blurred out, but we wanna use the YouTube test console. That's the one that the USG3 was currently on. One thing to consider, you can only have one firewall per site. So before the adoption will finish, we need to go into the cloud controller and remove the USG3. We'll click on settings and then we'll go remove and then we'll press confirm. Here we could already see that the next generation gateway light is available to adopt because that's when I was setting it up with my phone, but it did fail as there was already a console in there. So we're just gonna press click to adopt. Now the next generation gateway light is in our controller. Let's just take a quick look at it. We could see here that it's showing the UXG light and we have our two ports, our LAN and our WAN. And we can click on port manager, but there's only the two ports, so we're not gonna do that. We could also see our IP address, we could see our WAN address, and then we could see our devices connected to it. Under our insights, this is like any other device. It's gonna show us our system performance, CPU, and our memory. Under settings, we could change the name, the LED, we can enable jumbo frames, and then we can move this to another site if we want to, locate, restart, and remove. During the switch out, we still have the same settings. If we click back on my switch and go to port manager, my Windows machine that I'm sitting on right now is still on YouTube VLAN 2, and we could confirm by going IP config. So I'm getting an IP address of 172.16.1.6, which is that VLAN 2. So now let's go ahead and do some testing with it like we did with the USG3. Now with everything set to default as well as my computer on the default network, let's do a speed test we should get line rate. These results were similar to the USG, we're getting 946 down and 861 up, which was a little bit less than the USG. 
Now let's turn on the IDS and IPS. Here you can see that we have notify and block on and it's on high, the exact same as before. If we look at the detection sensitivity, you could see that we still have those same 11 filters. Now seeing as the gateway light is marketed as being 10 times the performance as the USG3, we should pretty well get line rate with the IDS IPS turned on. And those results are a lot better than the USG. The USG was in the mid 100s as where we're getting 946 down and 854 up. Now let's test the inner VLAN routing. Now back over at the open speed test, my computer still is on default. We have IDS and IPS turned off, so we should get line rate. Let's start the open speed test. So we are getting 889 down and 948 up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place this computer onto VLAN 2. We're going to turn IDS and IPS on and see what our results are. Now that is a huge improvement over the USG where we were mid 100s. We're getting 836 down and 902 up. I did a couple other tests and one was the smart cues turned on. We were getting 210 down by 301 up. You really shouldn't be using smart cues if your internet connection is above 300. I also tried out the VPN and we were getting 50 by 52, which is pretty standard. Now that was a whole lot of testing that we did and the UXG light performed really well. Would I recommend it? And I absolutely would. It pretty much hit every spec that Ubiquiti said that it would. 10 times the performance of the USG and the price point is better than the USG. Where could I see these being deployed? Well, if you're an MSP putting these in little shops or little stores, it would be great using your own hosted controller. If you're just getting into Ubiquity, you could use a self-hosted controller. Now, if you have any questions about the UXG Lite, put it in the comments below. If you're new here, there's gonna be a bunch more Ubiquity content on the channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one.